and welcome to SVG TV's news for Wednesday, March 29th, 2023. I'm Triska Campbell with the details. A two-day country conference dubbed Explosions, Ash and Lahaz, focusing on the 2020 to 2021 eruption of La Cifre Volcano here in St. Vincent and the Grenadines opened today at the UWI Open Campus in capital Kingstown. The conference, which is being hosted by the UWI Seismic Research Center in partnership with the University of the West Indies, Open Campus St. Vincent and the Grenadines, and the National Emergency Management Organization, NEMO, will highlight research that has been or is being undertaken on Asifra Volcano with particular focus on the eruption that occurred between December 27, 2020 and April 22, 2021. It also will provide a forum for regional and international scientific researchers and disaster response stakeholders to meet and discuss the state of knowledge regarding Caribbean volcanism and gaps in the knowledge that still exists while engaging with members of the public on these topics. Addressing today's opening ceremony, a representative of the UWI Open Campus, SVG, Camille Larkham, outlined the challenges faced by the volcano eruption during the time of the pandemic, including the displacement of thousands of incensions. She, however, noted that with the passage of time almost two years on, there has been sufficient opportunity to reflect on the events in totality, review the responses, conduct scientific research, and develop appropriate plans to mitigate the expected impact in the event of a reoccurrence. Chair of the conference committee, Professor Richard Robinson of the, Uni of the UWI Seismic Research Center, who served as the lead scientist advising the government and people of SVG on the activities of the volcano before, during, and after its eruptions, said the conference is an opportunity to share with the Vincentian public the initial findings done by other scientists. I will urge both those who are online and those who are here physically to listen to the talks. Yes, some of them very scientific and some of them, you know, might not be so easy even for me to understand the kind of experimental petrology and things I don't know about. But, um, but a lot of them are things and certainly it gives you an impression of what this volcano certainly has done in 2020-21. It, for those who are overseas or neighbors close by who was involved in the workshop yesterday, it tells you, unfortunately, what could happen in your territories and it tells you to a certain extent what we have to deal with in the region if we live in a region which is beautiful lovely islands but they have exploded mountains in them and we need to bear that in mind in delivering the fiji address at the opening ceremony prime minister dr alf themselves thanked regional governments peoples uh, from svg's diaspora and the international community for the assistance provided to the country and its people during a time of great need and extraordinary peril we are a nation forged in the cauldron of struggle. We've been beaten on the anvil of experience. We've gone through the fever of history, which has molded us into who we are, a very resilient people. There resides a genius of our people. It is in that fluid space in our collective consciousness that at every moment in our history, when it is required for us to come together, to stay together, and to work together, that we have always done so, despite occasional dissonances which naturally arises in life and living. Prime Minister Gensalves also told the gathering that SVG and its people went through a very difficult period and are still enduring the aftermath of the volcanic eruption, which came on the heels of the COVID-19 pandemic, along with Hurricane Elsa, a drought and the knock-on effects of global turmoil. All of those confluence of factors plus our historical legacies of underdevelopment derived in part from native genocide and the enslavement of African bodies 
with all of these constellation of forces, we're able to have a restoration from our ruins, from our devastation. In part of it, we are not a people of lamentations. Morning by morning, new mercies we see. All that we need, thy hand has provided. Great is thy faithfulness. And we believe that very sincerely. And we act it out. You may not realize it when you see us in our gaiety, in our dances, in our music, in our joy of life and living. You may say, mistakenly, this is an unserious people. This is a people who can't cope with these things. Well, not only have we coped, we have triumphed over extraordinary adversity. And even where the faces of our men and women and children across this land were strained and anxious, at every turn, we were confident that there would be restoration. And we have that hope, that faith, and that love. And all those things have brought us through. The conference closes tomorrow with a field excursion to view the impacts of the eruption on various areas on the island. Last year, a volcano began erupting effusively in December of 2020, with at least 31 explosive events recorded between April 9th and April 22nd, 2021. While acknowledging that the country engagement strategy for St. Vincent and the Grenadines 2022 to 2026 is an essential cornerstone for the future development of the country, Minister of Finance, Economic Planning and Information Technology Camilla Gonzalez says serious consideration will have to be given to the implementation process in terms of timing and prioritization. Minister Gonzalez was at the time addressing the launch of the country strategy, which is funded by the Caribbean Development Bank at the tune of 240 million EC dollars. The country engagement strategy, for example, when you read it, has 30 different projects for technical assistance. 30. That's 30 different consultancies. That's six consultancies a year. Is that the best way to program this money if we have an agenda of development, of transformation, and of resilience building in the wake of a hurricane, a drought, a pandemic, and a volcano. That's a question that we have to ask ourselves. And I know that each one of those individual consultancies and technical assistance projects is important to some subset, some slice of, of our economy. I understand that. But deciding what not to do is as important as deciding what to do. And I know in St. Vincent and the Grenadines that we can do anything. But we can't do everything, at least not all at once. We can't do everything at once. And that's why prioritization becomes important. Not prioritizing necessarily what you want to do, but when you want to do what you want to do. And that's why timing is everything. And so the other issue that we have to give some scrutiny and some rigor to is do we have to do everything that we have to do in this program in the time that we have here. Is it optimal? 
Minister Gonzalves said that the funding for the country and engagement strategy by the CDB is a generous envelope and the injection of $240 million into the critical areas that have been identified, such as climate change, education, agriculture, disaster risk management, can help to transform the developmental trajectory of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. The money is focused if the money is focused properly. And if we cut the fat in the multiplicity of, of small things that find their way inevitably into any large project, I hope that these discussions, therefore, um, that we still have to do, analyze the country engagement strategy through that prism. We have aggregated wants and desires of different arms of the government. We all have them in a document now. They add up to what they add up to. But we have to understand when we want them done and if we want them done as part of this project at this time in light of all the other things that we have going on. That would be my cautionary note as I own the country engagement strategy and endorse it as an essential cornerstone um, for development going forward in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. The Caribbean Development Bank has been and continues to be an absolutely essential partner in our development. I told them on Friday that their name constitutes a ranking of priorities. First, they are Caribbean. Second, they're about development. And only thirdly, are they a bank. We consider them our brothers and sisters in our quest to transform St. Vincent and the Grenadines. And because of that, we speak to them and with them in a way that we cannot do with some of our other development partners. I'm very Meanwhile, in his address at the ceremony, Prime Minister Dr. Ralph Gansal spoke out against the operations of the CDB on how it deals with climate change matters locally and in other member states. He also took a swipe at the bank for its dealings with the non-borrowing members. The non-borrowing members, the CDB cannot be. The bank determined... in accordance with the dictates largely of Britain, Canada, Germany, and Italy, important partners as they are, and they put money in. We who are borrowing, our permanent secretaries and representatives who go there must articulate strongly, unequivocally, their interests, the, 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 the interests of their members. Otherwise, the, public, the, the, the persons at the bank may feel that they're working for the Europeans and the Canadians inside of their own bank. And I hope the press report on what I'm saying, you know. Because these are things which have been boiling and we have to talk about them. And then we ourselves at home, some of our permanent secretaries, some of our technical people, good as they are, educated as they are, move to slowly in getting the projects done. Prime Minister Gensalf said the bank also needs to pay a lot of attention to the policy makers, even as is engaged in an ongoing basis with policy implementers. Because we haven't yet reached anywhere in the Caribbean, certainly not in St. Vincent, government by implementers, government by policy makers who are duly elected. Fundamental, that's what the Constitution says. That's what the people expect. You know, sometimes too, and I'm, at, I'm making that criticism of persons who go on the board of the CDB when the representatives from the respective countries 
not talking now the annual meetings of where the ministers of finance go. While acknowledging that some progress is being made under the new leadership of the bank, which he is happy about, including the openness, transparency, and urgency to get what policymakers want to get done, he said the bank should not forget why it was formed. What are the foundation issues? Caribbean Development Bank, its central mandate was to provide development financing for the less developed countries of the east of the, the, the Caribbean, what we now know as CARICOM, the less developed countries. You know why? Because CARIFTA and all the instruments which followed, including the Caribbean single market and economy, and we haven't reached the single market and economy fully, those measures benefit more the developed countries in the Caribbean. Benefit more Jamaica, Trinidad, Barbados than they benefit the less developed territories. Everybody inside here knows it. And when we wanted money for an airport, the CDB said no. I'm happy that they say yes for the port. And I thank them for providing a loan of 110 million US dollars, the largest single project they have approved since they are founded. And I'm saying I see new directions. But I can't but have maybe maybe I have too much of a memory. But the memory ain't so distant that I can't take it, take the lessons from it. So where are we? We have capacity problems inside of St. Vincent and Grenadines and these small countries. The CDB is sensitive to that theoretically where we do not have the capacity they must help us don't have a standoffish attitude that as a schoolmaster or schoolmistress and say well you ain't doing that and they're giving you a mark you have to help that's part of your job that's why, you, that's why we agree that you be set up. Pointing out that he is a huge fan of the CDB, PM Gansav said he wants to see the bank grow stronger, but it first has to deal with its weaknesses. Leader of the opposition and New Democratic Party, the NDP, Dr. Godwin Friday, said the party has four pillars in which it will transform the economy of SVG and the lives of Vincentians once voted into office. Dr. Friday was speaking at a village stop in Langley Park in the North Windward constituency last evening. When we change government, it's not just so that I could change my title. We change in government so that we could change the country. If we don't do that, then there's no point to the exercise. It's just one set of people replacing the other. I am not in for that. I want to be able to transform the lives of the people working with the people to do so because i don't have all the answers some people think that they have all the answers and they will do all kinds of things and trying to come and bamboozle you and say that even when it doesn't work that it was the best that could have been done but that's not true we have seen and people listen to me we have seen in the past, under a new Democratic Party government, under James Mitchell and Anna Eustace, the economy of this country grew every year on average about 5% throughout the term of their government. That means that the life of the people improved every single year. What have we had in the present government? They talk so much. The economy average growth, that is to say, every year how much? Sometimes it didn't grow at all. Sometimes it grew a little bit more. But over the 22 years, it's just under 2%. That is negligible. That can't change the life. This is why things are so hard for people throughout the country. The NDP leader also told the gathering that poverty and unemployment in the country has increased under the ULP administration. So when you ask yourself, 
How is it we have a big airport and things so hard? How is it that we have a fisheries complex up in Ovia and things so hard? How is it that the city is doing so much for poor people because they love them so much and you have more, pe more people than you had before? When you acknowledge that this is the reality in our country, then you have an obligation to say we have to look for something better. This is what we are offering in the new democratic parties. Now I told you that to transform the country, we have to have an economy that is growing and strong, that provides jobs for our people. And there are four pillars that we will develop. Agriculture is critical. You cannot abandon agriculture in Zimbabwe and Zimbabwe and Zimbabwe and think you're going to have a prosperous country. <laughs> and agriculture doesn't mean that every other Monday morning, you come and you say, I have a container, you want to pack up with something and ship abroad. And then two weeks or two months later, you want to container with something else. That is not agriculture. That is just Mamagain people. So what we need to do is to figure out how we are going to put the farmers back on the land and to do so in a way that they can make a decent living. Dr. Friday said the other plans that the party have for the development of the country include the blue economy, the tourism sector, and what he terms as the new economy. <music> Vincentians are again being warned against internet scammers and hackers. The latest caution comes from Crown Counsel with the National Prosecution Service, Rene Simmons, and Police Constable Ronald Francois, who were guests on the Police on the Beat program on NBC Radio on Monday evening, discussing the topic, Internet Scams, what should you do? What should you know? Simmons says in several instances, persons are unaware that their social media accounts are being hacked, while Constable Francois noted that it is almost impossible for a person to know if their social media platforms have been hacked, as hackers can use your accounts for several years without being discovered. Well, sometimes you, you're lucky if you get a message. <laughs> to say that somebody is attempting to sign in and you know if it's not you sometimes you're hacked and you don't even know um you may have friends and colleagues contacting you to say well i received a message from you or i'm seeing something strange on your profile and you don't know what this thing is but those sometimes are ways to know francois the honest truth is <laughs> right it's almost impossible. Difficult. Right. Due to the fact that, as Miss Simmons rightly said, unless someone, unless that person is sending emails or messaging people or doing anything out of the ordinary on your profile, right, you really won't know that person is using your platform. Right. That person could basically go on using your platform for like years. And unless they slip up to see, you know, uh, where the message was sent and someone could say, you know, I saw you send this message, I saw you send this link to me, whatever the case might be, right? It is very much impossible. Police Constable Francois further outlined that an email address is classified as basic information that a hacker could need or would need uh, to the internet to scam to occur. No, the basic information that you need for any internet scam mm -hmm. would be as simple as an email right because in this modern day and age you realize that everything is tied together from facebook instagram whatsapp everything is stemmed at one point right so much so that if i can access your personal email it would mean i have all of your information so as simple as an email right most people wouldn't go for the bank account because the bank account is something that people would be more skeptical and they would be reluctant to give but the thing about it is people actually do not need to ask you for that information right what can happen is as simple as someone sending a link to you mm -hmm. right you opening that link whether to access a video or something on the media right you would see it give you the option to log in mm -hmm. right and without being conscious that you've already logged into your account you log in again that now is what you would call a loop in the system so you've logged on to an internet server that the person basically created. 
just to take your information and from there every other thing comes one after the other on the acceptance of money transfer from unknown persons, Constable Francois said internet scammers can also withdraw funds from persons and these transactions can be identified as money laundering. It's a two-way street. Right. Right. So them sending you money means they need an account to send it to or wire Exactly. It to. Right. So it works both ways. The same way how they could wire it to you, they could take it back from you. So some people might say, um it's an empty bank account or it's a bank account that i don't use right mm. so i would take the risk and do it right but anything about it is getting access to a bank account alone you know you might see money passing through the account and that again could even be another offense because now that person is sending money to you and bringing it back money so, laundering you're, you're basically creating money <laughs> laundering. so the fact that you receive it Obviously, once, once you can send it, you can take it back. Crown Council Simmons and Constable Francois are advising persons who suspect a potential scam to report the matter to the police or other relevant authorities. In other news now, a fire destroyed a two-bedroom board house in Georgia Gutter, Bel Air, on Sunday, March 26, 2023. The homeowner, Roderick Williams, was not at home when the fire started. According to reports, William's sister, who is also his neighbor, smelled something burning and upon examination, noticed her brother's house was on fire. The fire department of the Rose St. Vincent and the Grenadines Police Force responded to the fire. However, they were unable to save William's house. His sister was more lucky as the fire, which had spread to her house, only caused partial damage. Williams, who is now dealing with his second house fire, is asking for the assistance of the public as he was unable to save anything from Sunday's fire. He can be contacted at telephone number 530-2692. That's 530-2692. Is reigning Sokomanak Delroy Fireman Hooper stepping away from Carnival this year? That's the question being asked after uh, he made a statement alluding to this during his performance at the 22nd anniversary celebration rally for the ruling Unity Labour Party last Sunday night at the decommissioned E.T. Joshua Airport tarmac. Media police is the biggest song. Everybody in Sydney said that they're going to need to do it. Social media police. Too much people are watch people business and attack people business. Too much. I will start to clap. Give yourself a round of applause. Too much people are watch people business and attack people business and I say all this and I say that. Right? And you know I love all you very much. I'm going to tell all you something. Carnival is coming up and I wouldn't be in Carnival this year. I wouldn't be in Carnival this year. So I want to see how Carnival is going to run without me. Tell me why! Tell me why! Tell me why! SVG TV News reached out to Hooper today for clarification on the statement he made during his performance at Sunday's ULP rally. He said he preferred not to say anything further on the matter at this time. The ULP Celebration Rally featured several other local over and overseas acts, including Skinny Fabulous, Grabber Finesse, Mighty Gabby, and Logic.